Jack Dorsey, Mark Zuckerberg, Susan Wojcicki, you tell me, what exactly is white supremacy? Who exactly is a white supremacist and who should be banned? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Boys, he's doing it. It's the leap. He's taking it. Here comes the leap, boys. Crowder is coming out of the closet. And not in the way that we all know he's coming out of the closet, like in the other way. Doing fuck it mask off time. Today, uh, question, it's a simple one. What is white supremacy? It's talked about a lot, but I don't hear it clearly defined a whole lot. So you tell me, what constitutes a white supremacist? I would love this if this was a 13 minute, if this was a 13 minute video where he just keeps asking over and over again, what is white supremacy? What is white supremacy? Huh? What is, no, I'm serious. What is white supremacy? He just keeps asking it over and over again. Let's see. And where do you draw the line at bannable offenses on social media? I, I really want to know. First off, let me start this by saying, of course, I was horrified and am horrified and condemn any and all mass shootings, uh, Christchurch, uh, the synagogues, mosques, awful. And anyone who supports that ideology, I've been very consistent. I want to make sure that there is no misconstruing what I'm about to say. Um, that being said, before we move on to the current loose. Yeah. I mean, he's horrified when people act on the uh, the things that he talks about quite frequently. I'm horrified when people end up actually taking me seriously and then acting on my words. It's so weird. I say with my desk gun. <laughs> I say as I fetishize guns as a substitute for my tiny penis. Can't believe people do school shootings. I say, with my, with my gun poster I have right here, too. Can't believe white supremacist, uh, white supremacist uh, terrorists go around uh, killing Muslims, I say, as I talk about how Muslims are dirty and smell bad and, you know, they beat their wives and all this other crazy shit. Goosey, goosey definitions of, of white supremacy um, before the bodies are even cold. They've been politicizing this, blaming it on President Donald Trump. On Saturday in the morning, this assault on the synagogue. Mm -hmm. And then, Saturday afternoon, our hearts are with the victims. Take responsibility for your actions, Mr. President. One you of are the, the culprit. Okay. I'm always like, you know, when a fire, when a fire starts to burn, right? And it starts to spread. No, I'm kidding. That was a disclosure song lyric, but I see a burning house. And, and I see firemen rushing towards it. Brave, courageous firemen rushing towards the burning house. I say, why are you trying to fix this problem right now? Why are you trying to politicize it? Huh? What's, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, firemen? Let's just let the fire happen, okay? Let's just let the fire escalate and then go all the way down the block and burn all the other houses. Let's not look for solutions because that would be politicizing the issue. Also, if an illegal immigrant sneezes in the direction of a, uh, of a, of a you know, purebred American, and by that I mean a, a white woman, a white lady, then that is indicative of all immigrants and all immigration in general, and we must stop that. But, you know, why are you guys politicizing this, I this issue? Can we just, what, what is arson, really? What is it? What is a fire? I mean, fire is is a natural part of life. It's a natural process. The structural integrity of that building was not, was not sound enough, and obviously that was why it was destined to burn. Why do we try to stop fires? Why do we try to prevent them? I hate it. Tell me right now, who is an arsonist? Um, really? Never mind that the, the shooter, and we can't show it from his manifesto, viciously anti-Trump because he saw him as a, a pro-Jew race traitor. Never mind that the Christchurch shooter hated conservatives yeah. uh, and did not, uh, as far as I remember, did not like Donald Trump. This is a part of a dis No. Oh, what is this narrative? The Christchurch shooter hated conservatives. You know, we agreed on only 89% as far as the scourge of Islam as far as multiculturalism and diversity ruining uh, Western uh, cultures, as far as feminism ruining 
uh, traditional marriages and therefore Western civilization, which we happen to believe is superior. As far as the beautiful homogeneity that we want to we want to uh, create in these Western nations that have attributed to their success. Well, you know, on top of that, he hated the Jews. So it must be a totally different, totally different mentality than the one I have, despite the fact that I agree with him on 99% of the things. He must be a leftist, actually. Because of that one thing. <laughs> Disturbing trend, okay? In vilifying people, particularly right now, we're talking, people are talking a lot about white supremacy without actually defi uh, de defining who the villain is. See if you understand what I'm talking about. You know, I'm Trump is a God. liar, but in some ways he's quite sincere in that he has a hard time saying things that he doesn't mean in the moment. He doesn't feel any abhorrence for white nationalism, and so he's not capable of expressing it. Well, I don't think if you look back to the beginning of his campaign, he has never separated himself from white supremacists. I, I can't even believe that you're Except asking a question did. of, uh, you know, President Donald J. Ray. You know, when he did, when he said, hey, there were bad people on both sides, and there were very fine people on both sides, you know, where the one side were the Nazis and white supremacists and their sympathizers, and the other side was the people who said, hey, don't be a Nazi, and, and don't be a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah, no, totally. Um, that's when he separated uh, the, the sides and then brought them back together, which is what a president's supposed to do. Hey, guess what, liberals? Trump is, a pre Trump is the president for all Americans, okay? And that includes Nazi Americans as well. Get wrecked. What do you, not want him to represent the Nazis? Wow, this is what liberals want. They want to excommunicate Nazis. Disgusting. What's a white supremacist, by the way? What is white supremacy? I don't know. I'm Steven Crowder. What's going on? What is white supremacy again? I don't know. Racist. Oh, 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 oh. in the White House. Of course he is. Yet the president failed to condemn it. Why? <laughs> because he can't. Because his own words and actions are racist too. That Navarro is muy caliente. She has got Ooh. some sass and... Let me, not, let me not address any of the very real concerns that millions of Americans share in regards to Trump being a racist. Uh, I, mean, I mean, he can't be a racist. He's the president. And if I think Trump is racist, if I concede that Trump is racist, that would mean that I... Maybe I'm racist too. Oh, no. What's a white supremacist, by the way? What's, what's that about? Does anybody know? No one will tell me. And uh, dead Johnny Mathis doesn't even understand that he did condemn it. And let me ask you this. Again, what is white supremacy? The problem here is that you hear these people mention it and they fail to define it. Because according to the media and the activist echo chamber, uh, white supremacist includes everybody from, of course, President Donald Trump. But then there's this guy who's been accused of it. And if you don't think that's enough, there's this guy who could forget if you're not, this guy. Yeah, he's, he's one of them. And then finally, by the time you get to this actual white supremacist, my point is the term has lost all meaning. Yeah. By the time you get to him, it's like, yeah. No, yeah, totally. It's just, it's just lost all meaning. Why are you guys not designating appropriately between white nationalists, white supremacists, white identitarians, race realists, Nazis, Strasserites, Nazbal Nation uh, people? Why? Why can't you make this distinction? Also, everyone to the left of me is a socialist uh, Stalinist, so... There's that. Nancy Pelosi, you're a fucking socialist. Why won't anyone do, make the distinction between alt-light and alt-right and Nazis, though? It's kind of disgusting. What is a white supremacist, by the way? You're really abusing the term. You're really abusing the term white supremacist. What is that? What is that, really? I mean, is this guy even a white supremacist? Not that guy. That guy's black, so he can't be a white supremacist. But this guy... Is he really even a white supremacist? I mean, think about it. We don't know. We don't know if he's a white supremacist. Maybe he likes memorabilia. After all, he likes Harley Davidson. You know, does that mean he's a bicycle or a motorbike? <laughs> Guess what, liberals? Yeah, yeah, no. First we had attack helicopters. Now we, now we want to make people motorbikes. Am I right? <laughs> uh, okay, let's keep going. This actual white supremacist. My point is the term has lost all meaning. Yeah. By the time you get to him, it's like, yeah, but you said Dr. Ben Carson was a white supremacist. <laughs> I don't appreciate the generalization about my, I don't see myself as a white supremacist. I'll stab you in the back buckle. The point, <laughs> let me make this too, really clear. Lest I come off as a hypocrite. I wonder how much Steven Crowder has to pay his producers to actually laugh, like fake laugh at his shitty jokes when the camera cuts back to them. 
Is there enough money in the world? I mean, there's definitely enough money in the world, probably. To just like fake laugh every time. <laughs> Please. My daughter has cancer. I need to pay her medical bills. <laughs> You're so funny, Steven. <laughs> um, let me define this for you because I'm going to challenge you to do so. The belief that anyone is inferior or entitled to fewer basic human rights solely based on race is evil. Okay? Whoever believes that, whoever subscribes to that worldview, is a racial supremacist. Uh, just as believing that anyone wealthier than you is entitled to fewer human rights, as those in socialism do, is evil. But none of this is exclusive. <laughs> That's what socialism is about. I love this, dude. Socialism is just like racism, but for the rich. That's what we... That's what people on the left believe in, guys. They just believe in killing the rich. That's what it is. Exclusive to white people. And that's not what the left is using to define a white supremacist or even a racist. Let me run you through a few examples here, okay? Then you tell me what white supremacist means and who we ban, and I want to get to Twitter in a second. If I were to tell you uh, that Asians, on average, tend to have high IQ scores, okay? Would that statement? Make me a, ra a racist, white supremacist, Asian? Would I be an Asian supremacist? Am I a yellow supremacist? Holy shit, dude. Holy shit. He's doing it. This is fucking mask off. This is the... I mean, I guess he's like stupid enough not to realize what he's doing with the race realism memes, but... Asian supremacist? Honestly, think about it, answer. Now, if I were to tell you that black people, on average, not all, are faster than most people in general, in part because they have more fast twitch muscle fibers. Is that racism? Is that black supremacy? Is it white supremacy? Now, what if I were to make the statement that Eastern Europeans, on average... Oh, he is doing it. I, I thought he was a I thought this was a joke. I didn't realize that he's like, he's like fully... I mean, it's the warrior gene, right, guys? I mean, am I a racist for pointing, at, pointing that out? Come on! Like, this is the movement between culture and 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 racial determinism okay culture is more often than not for republicans a substitute for race well you know it's the black culture it's the black culture that keeps them down um white people are are of course failed by the system let's not fix the system either but when white people when white men are doing bad it's probably because you know feminists took over or black people got uh, equality of some sort or, you know, uh, we're, we allowed uh, gay people to marry one another. But, you know, when black people are doing poorly, it can't be, it can't have anything to do with the material conditions or, or history. It, it must have everything to do with their culture, right? So this is one step further than that argument. This is taking it to the next level, which is, well, every race is a little different. I mean, think about it. How many over six foot Asians do you see? Asians have different kinds of eyes. Black people have black skin. So of course, you know, uh, IQ differences are fairly significant. And well, IQ also is a contributing factor to you, the likelihood that you will uh, commit crime or be successful. So I'm just, this is science, guys. This is just science. Let's not ever consider the fact that IQ is not a reasonable metric to actually analyze uh, uh, intelligence. Uh, even the person who created it said as much, uh, and it was literally t for children. Um, let's also never consider the fact that IQ points uh, vary drastically for the same person if they train for it or if they're conditioned to, uh, if they're conditioned to the culture in which the IQ tester is actually uh, creating the IQ test in. But more importantly, IQ, IQ metrics can change for the same individual depending on their financial circumstances. But, you know, let's not talk about any of that. Asians have high IQ. I'm Steven Crowder. It's different. What are you going to do? It's different. Not all are physically stronger than, say, Asians. Look at that. Every nary, nary an English name or Asian <laughs> name, aside from Brian Shaw and one Canadian. Is that white supremacy? Now, let me make you a little less comfortable here, but go with me in this experiment. What if I were to say that white people, on average, have higher IQ scores than black people, on average? 
Is that white supremacy? Because guess what? I just said the exact same thing. I repeated myself. I was redundant on average. Wait, what? Is that? What if I were to say that white people, on average, have higher IQ scores than black people, on average? Okay. What you do with this information and what you choose not to reveal about this information is 100% the difference between a racist person doing race realism and a person who is conducting accurate analysis over a fairly antiquated method of, of measuring one form of intellect. So let's see where he goes with this. Is that white supremacy? Because guess what? I just said the exact same thing. I repeated myself. I was redundant, only I used different contrasting methods. So please, go ahead and tell me which statements are acceptable and which are not. Speaking of unacceptable, uh, please bookmark this page if you're on YouTube because apparently subscriptions and notification bell may not be working. Of course, the only way you can support this content is if you join up at lotofetter.com slash mugclub or subscribe on iTunes. Uh, part of this is what's really important. Today's leftist playbook is, is calling everything a white supremacist dog whistle. And this can go from simple phrases like he, he choked, I'll show you that in a second, to using words like we cherish our history. Here you go. He is appealing to those voters. Whether he's doing it deliberately or not, he's whistling at them and they're hearing it. Romney choked like a dog. He choked. He went. I can't breathe. Kind of funny. <laughs> ah, TYT, baby. Let's get it. Copy strike incoming, boys. Talk about people choking hundreds of times over the course of my life. They say that. They're not so committed to the metaphor that they then talk about not being able to breathe. I've never seen that happen. What? And in New York, okay. where Eric Garner was choked to death by the police and famously had the last words, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Uh, On Saturday, okay. President Trump said that... Okay, I'm going to keep it real again. This seems a little... Uh, this seems low over the top, the choking thing. I don't even know if Trump is smart enough to dog whistle like that. <laughs> Sorry, John. Seems like a stretch. But hey, what are you going to do? But also, I love this. Like, I love, that, I love that Steven Crowder is only talking about the stretch cases, the edge cases, and not the obvious cases, like when he said, like, Mexicans coming over the border are, are being sent by the Mexican government, and they're not, the, they're not their best. They're the rapists and, and drug dealers and criminals, which is not only statistically untrue, but also insanely racist to say. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the many different things that he, the many different ways that he has referenced uh, people of color, none of those are racist. Or wait, hold on, sorry. The fact that he said there were very fine people on both sides at a Nazi rally. Maybe that is a pretty good deciding factor on whether or not someone has sympathies, at least sympathies, towards Nazis. Holy fuck. Or wait, let's not even talk about both sides. Even before he was president, the Central Park case, the fact that he took a full, full page ad in the New York Times asking for the death penalty for five black teenagers in that case, the fact that he was unapologetic years later for... Uh, for his statements asking for five black children to be executed on the New York Times. The fact that he was investigated multiple times for his misconduct in regards to dealing with black tenants, in regards to making sure that black uh, tenants uh, did not uh, inhabit his building. You know, none of those are uh, significant. Let's just talk about this one really, one like overtly ridiculous uh, uh, case. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm out of control. I apologize for that. We must all, quote, cherish our history. Tom Periello is a former Democratic congressman from Charlottesville. He heard that as a dog whistle. So you believe, let me get, let me get this straight. Okay. Young. Yeah, no, those are the only, <laughs> those are the only times that anyone's ever thought Trump might be racist. <laughs> Okay, it's honestly harder to find, it's honestly harder to find Trump not being racist than finding Trump being racist. And partially, like, of course, racism is, is um, partially a consequence of ignorance and stupidity, which Trump has plenty of, and partially a consequence of hatred, right? And Trump has some of that too, but it's mostly ignorance. But like, it's almost, I mean, he has one of these mishaps once a week. And you're just going to go with the, the choking one? Almost like it fits your narrative so comfortably, Steven Crowder, that you, you had to decide to, 
to use that one. Let's just look. Let me just Google Trump racist, okay? I'm just going to find what we can find about Trump racist videos. Donald Trump is blatantly racist. The media is too scared. Okay, let's watch this. Donald Trump, you, you have to admit it, is fun to watch. Is this a Donald Trump reality show with, with nine supporting actors? We look fantastic. Uh, Donald Trump turns this from a circus into a full-fledged reality. What the Funny, fuck? strange, is unpredictable. Racist. He's so fun to watch that it's easy to lose sight of how terrifying his rise really is. But Donald Trump is... Okay, Donald Trump is funny and, and, and fun to watch. Just because it's a, it's a nerd like Ezra Klein saying it shouldn't mean that you guys should get immediately upset at him. That was my first uh, reaction too. Whenever I see like a liberal like Ezra Klein saying like, Donald Trump is uh, fun to watch and funny. Yeah, he is, okay? After a while, you gotta be able to pull yourself out of this and, and realize that like the, the conditions that we exist under are fucking horrific. And that, you know, uh, my family is, is gonna have a harder time coming to America. Uh, but, but hey, it's still, this is Ezra Klein. Or not, yeah. Isn't it? Isn't his name Ezra Klein? Is the uh, Donald is Trump? You you have to admit it is fun to watch. Is this uh, Donald Trump? Why did you say it's not Ezra Klein? You guys are fucking. You guys are fucking with me. Holy shit! I hate my audience so much. While on the helicopter, our president has finally released a birth certificate. I'd want to look at it, but I hope it's true. He climbed to the like. Like, my mans, my mans totally ran, uh, ran on calling Obama a non-American, like the birther conspiracy. I, he's done so many racist things that I forgot about that. I forgot to mention that, dude. Like, I, and then not only did he run on that, but he refused to admit that he was wrong. And even at some point, literally said, well, you know, Folks, well, you I'm know, not God. I got him to admit it. I got him to show his birth certificate. That's transparency. America won on this day. Thanks to me, Donald Trump. Like, just fucking, ugh. Not racist, though. You know, the first black president, uh, we, we, we uh, started to question whether or not he was American. Because, you know, he was the first black president. But <laughs> not racist, of course the top of the polls in this election by calling Mexicans rapists and killers. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. He defended a poor debate performance by accusing Megyn Kelly of being on her period. Oh, you can see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, okay, that's not the racist stuff, but whatever. On all Muslims. Total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. When MSNBC yeah, that was strange. When he, wanted to, uh, when he wanted to ban an entire religion from coming into the country, that was, I mean, not, not a bigot though, of course. <laughs> Not, bi not bigoted at all. He's Joe Scarborough asked Trump about his affection for Vladimir Putin. This person that kills journalists, political allies. Yeah. Trump, that is usually not something in American politics others must lose. They beat us all the time. The day before Trump won in New Hampshire, he had a rally in Manchester. And at that rally, he heard a woman in the crowd call Ted Cruz a pussy. She just said a terrible thing. And Trump, rather than ignore it or, or move on from it, he went to the woman and he said, say what you said again. Shout it out, because I don't want to say And eventually he spoke it. <laughs> she said he's a pussy. That's terrible. Her. And the media. <laughs> God, okay. Ezra Klein is such a pussy, dude. Holy shit. That, how can you intersperse this moment, which is arguably a hilarious moment, as a serious anecdote in a sea of awful things that Donald Trump has done? God, I mean, I know. I know. That's like a, that's like a gendered, uh, uh, it's like a gendered pejorative, and it's, it's terrible. But, like, stop being such a fucking pussy, Ezra. Holy shit, dude. Jesus Christ, the absolute state of liberalism. Like, <laughs> I mean, fuck Ted Cruz. <laughs> like, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. And it, it is something that the president shouldn't be doing. But also, still kind of funny that the president is doing that. Probably a little bit funnier than him, like, you know, instituting the child separation policy as a deterrence and then using every possible method he can to lie about uh, using that as a deterrence, fully forgetting the fact that uh, Kelly went on CNN a year before and admitted to using it as a deterrence policy. So then they had to f admit that they were using it as a deterrence policy. <laughs> but you, 
Oh, God. But yeah, he... I mean, it's inappropriate, but... There's, like, worse things that he's done. And it takes away from its seriousness. It's kind of like if Trump farted on the podium and then... Uh, and, and then they put it, they put that in this video of like, hey, uh, Donald Trump is really terrible as a president uh, because he's, uh, you know, he's still doing all the drone warfare that Obama engaged in. Uh, he's separated thousands of children from their parents. And also he farted on this podium and that's really terrible. I can't believe that that he did that. That's fine. You as a man are okay with dehumanizing women, but a lot of people aren't. Okay. No, I already said that you, using a gendered uh, slur like that is not good and certainly not great for the president to do. But, like, there's plenty of worse things that he's done than have another woman repeat calling Ted Cruz a pussy. Apologies, I have not watched Captain Marvel. That's probably why. Racist, sexist, you just need to be transphobic today, and that's the bingo. Ah, fuck off. Anyway, let's get back to Trump's not a racist, by the way. That was the first video that we found of Trump being a racist. Young Turks buzz cut. You believe that <laughs> Donald Trump is possibly the stupidest president ever, but he had the fourth. He was playing not only 4D chess, oh, he was playing 18D chess. When he was talking about Donald, when he was talking about Mitt Romney choking like a dog, he was secretly thinking about Eric Garner because he was trying to mobilize all the neo-Nazis in the Northeast. <laughs> that's an episode of West Wing I'd love to see Sorkin write. What? He's clearly, he's clearly <laughs> trying to reach... The, the five borough racist voters by he's referencing <laughs> Eric Garner. He choked like a dog. Uh, oh, yeah, genius. And we can't say cherish our history? And by the way, th those are isolated incidents. Those are, yeah, those are the two reasons why all these liberals are hysterical about Donald Trump being racist, guys. Nothing else, okay? Not controlling the narrative here. Definitely not trying to do, trying to do the most, it's not even charitable coverage at this point. It's like, it's criminal. This amount of omission is absolutely criminal. Like, this is propaganda. There is not a, there's no other way of looking at it. Like, I want to be, I want to be like, hey, you know, Steven Crowder, like, doesn't know. I guess he's, I guess he's unaware that Trump is racist. And like, this is the only thing he found. Like, imagine. Like, this is the only thing he was able to find. Okay, why did you, I mean, Crowder couldn't vote for him because he's Canadian, of course. Uh, he's a Canuck cuck. But, um, but like, why do you think people voted for him? <laughs> Was it the fact that he constantly flip-flopped on almost every single policy position that he had? Is that why people voted for him? Because the only thing that was consistent throughout his campaign was, you know, the racism and the bigotry. <laughs> no, the American people voted for Donald Trump because they wanted these goddamn corporations to finally have the tax cuts that they deserve for being job creators and for also... Um, you know, the, the automation that they will be able to bring about with all of the tax cuts that they got. Okay, but it's gotten even more sinister. We've talked about the left wanting to control language. The left wants to use long-standing, clearly defined words like Western civilization. They want to include that among the secret dog whistle list. Now, it may or may not be true that some white supremacists are doing that. Or we should... Virtually all, every single white supremacist does that. That is the whole point of a dog whistle. Just because you're also in agreement with a lot of the things that they believe in doesn't change the reality that like they're doing that and you're doing the same exact thing. I love that he added the may or may not be true that some white supremacists are doing that. I thought he read the manifesto of the, the New Zealand uh, Christchurch mosque shooter. What is the great replacement? What do you think that is? You, my friend. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm out of control. I apologize for that. A, a conservative media platform that used to run ads all the goddamn time all over YouTube. I forget what it's called. Do you guys remember what it was? He was on a, he was on a conservative gone. media platform. I forget what it was called. It was like online. Alongside Lauren Southern. No, not Blaze TV. CRTV. Alongside Lauren Southern, who coined the Great Replacement, or at least popularized the Great Replacement as a terminology. So much so that people were upset at her 
and, and were correctly criticizing her after the Christchurch shooting that she had to take down her video. She, I think she re-uploaded it, or she at least unlisted it for the time being. But, you know, we don't know what white supremacy is. We don't know what great replacement is. Yes, we all know Lauren Southern is a baddie. Chill, chat. Okay? Supposed to lose her right to her opinions completely founded on principles and deductive reasoning for fear of some white supremacist somewhere using some of this terminology, which will ultimately to make a point that I don't even agree with when I'm using the term Western civilization to make a point that a white supremacist would never agree with as well. Like so what? Is trying to like what? Name one point that you would make that a white supremacist probably wouldn't agree with. I'm sure there are white supremacists in his comment section right now. I'm a proud man, said the black man. I'm a proud Hispanic man, said the Hispanic Jack man. Jack Dorsey? Oh, fuck about Oh, no, I lost The five everything. borough racist voters by doing that. Are we supposed to lose our right to our opinions completely founded on principles and deductive reasoning for fear of some white supremacist somewhere using some of this terminology, which will ultimately to make a point that I don't even agree with when I'm using the term Western civilization to make a point that a white supremacist would never agree with as well? What, I want to know what his point is where he's making a point about Western civilization. <laughs> okay, stop fucking spamming boomer chat. I know I'm a boomer. I know I'm a boomer. I, I, I just, this is why you love me. This is why you come here, okay? Stop throwing up the fucking boomer emote every time I say something like, Oh, I lost my place in the chat. Oh, no. That's why you're here, okay? You're here to watch me sip Diet Coke and be a goddamn boomer. And play with fish every now and then. But I just want to know. What point could you make about Western civilization and, and how awesome Western civilization is I'm not without, God. without coming across like a, like a white nationalist or a white supremacist or, you know, any number of those? And also, I wonder if it's deliberate that he's saying, like, what is a white supremacist and not necessarily talking about white nationalism? The, the left is trying to cut people like you and I off at the pass, simply because we believe Western civilization is the best in the world. And I do believe that. I think a lot of you believe that. That doesn't make anybody a white supremacist. Certainly not worthy of banning or deplatforming. But let's, let's, okay, let's follow the logic trail here. Let me try to use a couple of examples. Uh, again, I really want liberals watching leftists out there to give me a definition here. White supremacist and what warrants being banned. Is believing that the United States, is believing that America is superior to Mexico, white supremacy. Now, what if I believe that the Mexican-American business owner is superior to the white guy working with the Mexican cartel? By the way, there are white people in Mexico. Have you seen the soap operas? Or... Jesse Ventura. Here, okay, is, so it's about six. here is Steven Crowder talking about Western civilization in a way that I'm certain the Christchurch shooter or the, the other uh, synagogue shooter from San Diego or even the same, the, Robert Bowers, the other synagogue shooter from, uh, from uh, Pennsylvania would not agree with. I'm sure that Steven Crowder, when he says stuff like political Islam is incompatible with Western civilization, this is one of those, one of those like things that he's just saying that, that, that uh, no white supremacist would ever agree with. They didn't put that in their manifestos, right? <laughs> no way. Oh, wait, that's exactly what they agree with. That's precisely what they mean when they talk about Western civilization and the distinction between Western civilization and how like, these other cultures and these other races are incompatible with Western civilization. 6.30 uh, a.m. at the time of this recording, um, obviously just heart-wrenching, waking up to the, the, the Manchester terrorist bombing, and, and now uh, I don't know exactly what's happening in the, in the Philippines. It's, it's just unfolding. Um, just a, a pit in my stomach. And, you know, I, I know that outrage... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Wasn't he talking about how we shouldn't be politicizing these uh, disasters like right around here, right after a white supremacist shooting? Didn't he literally just say that? Didn't he say that like in, in the first three minutes when I'm he's like, God. I woke up you know from my slumber right. and I put on my Canadian lumberjack flannel to, to record this video and shit on political Islam. Like, my dude didn't even wait until the morning to record this.
Page is easy, and you see it a lot on both sides, but particularly on the right with just the finger wagging and sort of false patriotism. And um, we're still going to write comedy tonight. We're still going to do what we can to try and create a show. But but I, I think that whether it's journalism or outrage or even comedy, uh, it serves no purpose if there isn't some kind of a seeking for truth. And I don't mean your truth. I don't mean... Uh, finding a truth, I mean... Wait, Steven Crowder still maintains the position that he's a comedian? I thought he gave up on that narrative, but... Um, that's kind of... That is actually kind of funny. Like, that might be the funniest thing he said. Uh, secondly... <laughs> is he about to admit that, like, there's some truth in his comedy? Mr. These are just jokes? Uh, when, you know, when someone disparages black people or uses, like, stereotypes? Did he just also admit in the same 53 seconds at 3.30 a.m. in the morning while he's doing this Islam is incompatible with the West video? Did he also admit that, like, there's some truth to all the jokes that he makes? Got it. Nice. The truth. There's no living your truth. There's the truth. And, um... Let's get let's get down to some some concretes. A lot of other people are 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 trying to avoid talking specifics. Let's talk some specifics. Right now, I just read in the Daily Beast they arrested the man in association right now, suspect with the Manchester terrorist attack, and they said fake news. Daily Beast fake news. That you know we need to uh, fight the root. I think the influence of these violence. It's difficult to fight the the values, the influence, the, the influences of the violence. Something along those lines, but refuse to say Islamic terrorism. We don't know that yet, necessarily. We do know that apparently in, in the Philippines it is Islamic terrorism. Um, listen, if you want to practice Islam in, in sort of the, the inconsequential guy in the sky, semi-secular sense, uh, fine. But I think it's time to acknowledge that Fair. political Islam, as prescribed by Muhammad, the political practice of Islam is completely inconsequential with the West. Wait, what? <laughs> was he going for it here? Like, was he... Inconsequential? What? What was he trying to do here, you think? Political Islam as prescribed by Muhammad? I love it. I love it when dudes who've only read, like, anti-Islamic <laughs> anti sentiments, uh, just to learn the talking points, try to describe the, the nuances in Islam. Political Islam is insignificant with the West, guys. Okay? It's insignificant with the West. Not incompatible, which is what I was trying to go for, but... What do I mean by that? Well, okay, let's nail down some, some, some concrete values. Let's exclude terrorism for a second. Uh, do you believe in any Sharia courts whatsoever in Western culture? You're not welcome here. Do you believe that it's okay if you marry a six-year-old? You're not welcome. Do you believe that it's okay to beat your wife for any reason at all? You're not welcome. Do you believe in any kind of punishment? Not only death, any kind of a punishment for apostasy or people leaving the faith of... Love, love, to, love to hype up the police force, by the way. It's bad to beat your wife, but also, you know, the police force never did anything wrong. You know what I'm saying, brothers? Um, okay. <laughs> it's almost like it doesn't matter what religious beliefs you might hold. It, like, some people are fucking shitty. I'm not God. Are liberals allowed? Islam. You're not welcome. Do you believe in any kind of punishment for blasphemy? As you see with, with Zuckerberg and Facebook saying they're going to crack down on anti-Islamic blasphemous posts. Do you believe in any kind of punishment for blasphemy? You're not welcome. These values, the political... Wait. He's upset that... He's upset that Zuckerberg said that he was going to crack down on people who were shitting on Islam during the time when... Uh, during that time when we found out that Facebook was pretty much responsible or pretty much helping uh, the, in the eradication, the systemic eradication of Rohingya Muslims? You have an issue with that? that? That Zuckerberg was like, hey, sorry, 
sorry that our platform played a hand in, in spreading misinformation about all the Muslims living in, in uh, all the Burmese Muslims. So, uh, you know, there was a genocide that happened. Oopsie daisy. We're going to try to combat it. And Steven Crowder's up here waking up like, hey, that's fucking bullshit. You still need to be able to, you still need to be able to say whatever the fuck you want about Muslims, okay? Doesn't matter if it contributes to a genocide, okay? It's freedom of speech. Also, conservatives are being censored on this platform, and you guys really need to, like, make sure that, you know, uh, you just, like, you need to change that, okay? prescription of Islam is by its own definition completely incompatible with Western culture because it seeks to eradicate Western culture. That's its purpose. And never forget, ladies and gentlemen, that Muslims, okay, Muslims living in America are actually more tolerant to the LGBT community than white evangelical Protestant Christians. Never forget that. And as a matter of fact, they're getting even more and more tolerant as time goes by. Now tell me, which constituency holds outsized political power? You think it's the Muslims with the one Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib? Or you think it's the, the white evangelical Protestants who get a nod from the president? Who do you think influences legislation more in this country? Do you think that when the Trump administration is moving to uh, start offering federal funding to, uh, to, to church-backed adoption agencies that refuse to adopt children to LGBT parents, do you think they're doing that on behalf of the intolerant Muslims? Or do you think they're doing that on behalf of the intolerant evangelical Christians? Probably to appease Ilhan Omar, right? Ha, <laughs> oh wait, Ilhan Omar, that Muslimic terrorist, that Musliman, um, she has, uh, she is uh, very outspoken about LGBT rights with a capital fucking T. So maybe Steven Crowder is incompatible with Western culture. Incompatible, a lot less compatible than someone like Ilhan Omar, for example. I would think this would be some common ground where progressives, leftists, and, and the right should, should be able to come together because the left would completely get on board with eradicating these worldviews of attributed to Christians. If Christians were okay with beating their wives, if Christians were okay with, with jailing people who spoke out against Christ, of course they'd have a problem with it. So I, I think that we should have the exact same problem with political Islam. You know, I, I remember when, um, when I lived in Canada, 9-11 happened, and I remember being in comedy clubs and people saying, well, you know what, this, it doesn't happen in Canada, it doesn't happen in Europe, it doesn't happen in Denmark. Wait, <laughs> what was he doing at comedy clubs, dude? <laughs> what was he doing at comedy clubs? Was he just trying to learn how to do comedy? Should have stayed in the comedy clubs, my boy. <laughs> Fucked up. It's because America has poked the bear. Well, now it's happening everywhere. And, and that's because appeasement is completely futile. Trying to appease a, a group of people whose worldview requires the eradication of those who appease them is, is, is so silly, I can't even wrap my mind around it. Yeah, no, totally. This is not, this is not a really horrifically bigoted take, by the way. Muslims just want to kill everyone that's not a Muslim. It's just facts, guys. Also, in the meantime, you know, the United States of America conducted uh, imperialist missions in the, the Middle East, completely destabilizing that region and, and contributing to millions of people dying. Wait, we did that in South Vietnam, North Vietnam. Uh, we've helped uh, Pol Pot execute in, in Cambodia. Um, this is before we get into all of the uh, Latin American missions that we had. It's almost like America is incompatible with the rest of the world and wants to kill everyone that does not, uh, that does not subscribe to um, American supremacy. Hmm. Let's keep going, though. Also, this notion that, like, Muslims want to kill everyone that's not a Muslim is really silly, given the fact that, you know, there's, there's, uh, what is it, uh, one billion at this point? It's like the second largest uh, religion, practice religion on the planet. I mean, they'd fucking win, dog. That's, they'd win. And today, the outrage now is Donald Trump called them losers at life. We're seeing this. Hey, Donald Trump, do you believe Donald Trump called them losers at life? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I get it. You know what? He's not the most eloquent guy, eloquent guy, neither am I, apparently. I've talked about that. But you know why he's saying losers at life? You know why that's different from people saying this heinous attack and these monsters? Because he's trying to shame them. Because terrorists, because Islamic extremists 
can only be punished through shame. Shame is worse than death. That's why people have talked about bacon tip bullets or bacon grease because of a very physical worldview of heaven when they reach heaven's gates and, and it would be shameful to be associated with a lowly pig. That's why everyone was so outraged at Abu Ghraib when, God forbid, uh, American female soldiers stripped terrorists naked and had dogs barking at them while they laughed. Which, by the way, if I'm an American and I'm captured by ISIS and what they do is have a woman laugh at me naked with a dog barking, I'll, I'll do a jig and thank, thank the Lord above that I'm not being burned alive in a cage. So. I'm sorry, what? Did he just say that the, the fucking enemy combatants that, that were tortured in Abu Ghraib should have been thankful that they were tortured by this occupying force in their country that no one asked for? The fuck is my dude saying? Oh, by the way, white supremacists would never agree, would never agree with Steven Crowder's uh, take on uh, how political Islam is incompatible with Western civilization. Up to this point, they would never agree. They would say, hey, you're wrong. We shouldn't torture Muslims. They would say, hey, Steven Crowder, you're wrong. Political Islam is compatible with Western civilization. Could he find a better way to express himself to the president? Sure, I would like to see him do so, hopefully in the, in, in the hours that follow. But starting by shaming them and belittling them, th that's, that's one hell of a start. And that this is one hell of a start, boys. This is the best weapon we have against combating ISIS, okay? Shaming them on Twitter, dog. This is what we got. This is our president. He's fuck he told them. He said they're losers. And guess what? That's the best way to deal with ISIS. <laughs> You're fucking canceled, sis. ISIS is canceled. Bitch. That's why you're seeing a contrast between him and other leaders. And I'm not the biggest fan of him on every issue, but you know That's the contrast. He fucking cancels ISIS? How many, how many world leaders have said, hmm, I'm not, not your best take, sweetie. ISIS is canceled. To al-Baghdadi, okay? When he made his comeback tour. How many world leaders had the balls to say, ugh, I don't know about that. I'm about to spill some tea. How many world leaders have the balls to do that? None, I tell you. Okay? None. When Barack Obama um, sanctioned the, the SEAL Team 6 uh, assassination on Osama bin Laden, did he say that Osama bin Laden was canceled? I think not. I think not. It's not good enough. It's not good. You got to say, Osama, that's a yikes, okay? Osama bin Laden, that's a yikes for me, family. Didn't cancel him. Not good enough. You know what, today, I certainly stand with the president of the United States and the sentiment of shaming these absolute losers at life in contrast with other world leaders and as opposed to mincing words on social media. And, uh... I, I, I just, everyone's going to talk about unity today. That's the big thing, right? Everyone's going to get, now you don't need to be inflammatory right now. You shouldn't be bombastic like you are. Uh, we, it's time to unify. No, it's not time for unity. It's time for an alliance, okay? And there's a difference. It's time for an alliance of people who, who, who value everything that has created the West, who hold West. <laughs> this is great. But uh, I just wanted to, for a second, I just wanted to stop and do one of these. Um... Damn, just found out about ISIS. Man, that shit sucks. <laughs> I don't know how many people will actually get that meme reference, but man. Just found out about ISIS, guys. That shit sucks. <laughs> that shit's whack, dude. Yeah, I got to take my shirt off, too, and just make you stare at my, my clavicles. Hmm. That shit's whack. I can't be sexy. I can't do the sexy guy thing. Like, like you got to lick your lips a little bit, like your teeth. Like, damn, just found out about ISIS, dude. Yo, that shit's whack as fuck. Fuck, dude. That's a yikes for me, ISIS. More like yikeses, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> dude, dude, Fortnite dances. 
<laughs> That's going to be our next president, so I probably shouldn't be making jokes like that. All right, let's keep going. Like you are. Uh, wait, it's time to unify. God. No, it's not time for unity. It's time for an alliance, okay? And there's a difference. It's time for an alliance of people who, who, who value everything that has created the West, who hold Western values, the, the, the values that allow me to use my iPhone and this internet to upload this video to a platform freely, which hopefully won't censor it as hate speech. Who knows now? With a Yeah. Western values is the reason why we have iPhones, guys. Uh, never mind the fact that it's exploited third world labor, it's exploitation in, the, in African nations where we steal conflict minerals from. None of those things are, none of those things are the reasons why we have uh, iPhones. It's Western values, bitch. Also, you know, Soviet Russia didn't invent the cell phone or anything, so it's not even... I mean, they never had any, they never had any of that technology. We invented it. We, the Western civilization meme. The, the horrible Leviathan that Twitter and Google and Facebook have become in choosing to eradicate certain worldviews. But all, it's Western values that allows this even to happen. So I'm not about unity right To be perfectly fair, exploitation and imperialism and, and uh, you know, death and destruction are... They are Western values. That is true. How about an alliance? How about an alliance with other people who, who, who recognize and ally themselves against the evil that is political Islam? Because you know what? To unite with anywhere in the Islamic world who are even enablers. My dude, what the fuck? This is literally what white supremacists say all around the world. There is a reason there is a reason why Anders Breivik's manifesto, Anders Breivik, the Norwegian uh, uh, white supremacist terrorist, is heavily featured in the manifesto of the Christchurch mosque shooter and is heavily featured, or plagiarized rather, in the manifesto of the uh, synagogue shooter. These guys all literally do an international call to arms against Islam every single time they go out and kill people. What you are doing right now is identical to the manifesto. But if you ask uh, Steven Crowder a year later, or two years later, he's like, hey, so what? But what if sometimes white supremacists also do an international call to arms against Islam uh, by politicizing uh, a recent uh, tragedy and, and, and you know, asking for, uh, asking for all of our brothers to, to fight back against Islam? I just, so what? I mean, that doesn't make me a Nazi, okay? That doesn't, that doesn't make me a white supremacist. What is a white supremacist? Can you define white supremacist? What, what does that even mean? You know what I mean? Lately, he lives there. I have no communications to the United States other than doing my off-the-grid show, which we do from various locations so that the uh, drones won't find me and kill me. This man is not covered under free trade. <laughs> you take it back. You take him back. <laughs> I didn't want to be in the States because of fluoride in your tap. Of course, the parasites were a trade-off I didn't see coming. I should have asked more questions. All right. <laughs> if I say that North America is superior to Africa, is that white supremacy? Now, what if I say that the Kenyan-Canadian immigrant who's become a civil engineer is superior to the white South African pimp? Let me be clear here. I, I don't believe the white race or white people are superior by... I don't believe that any person of any race is superior by birthright in any shape or form due to their race. And I'll be honest here. Unlike a lot of ethnic minorities, this is... If, if people want to talk about checking privilege, that's never going to happen. But if you want to talk about recognizing some things about yourself because you're white that may, may result in a different experience, sure. Unlike a lot of ethnic minorities, I've never particularly seen my race as a huge part of who I am. Why? Because they're all different kinds of white people. We're not, a, we're not one monolithic clan. They're Irish, Italian, Russian, French, Scottish, Eastern European. But I do identify with the ideals of the United States and, yes, by proxy, Western civilization. The same Western... Um, I thought he was going to actually turn around and be like, you know, I, I lived a pretty privileged life. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that uh, the police pulled me over and immediately assumed that I'm a criminal or like something like that. Just like the bar was set so incredibly low. It was set so incredibly low. And yet he still, he just still couldn't get over it and immediately pivoted back to, you know, that's the reason why I identify with America and, and Western values. Western ideals that all those aforementioned people risked life and limb to try and see. The ideas of, of free speech, religious freedom, freedom from government tyranny, all of which, by the way, they created a unique... Religious freedom, but also we should do something about Islam. <laughs> <laughs> religious freedom, 
but also like this Muslim thing, we got to deal with it. Okay. <laughs> we got to do an international call to arms against this Muslim shit, but religious freedom. <laughs> That's why they want to come here for the religious freedom. Also, fuck you. <laughs> we need to deal with you. <laughs> this is awesome. Uniquely rich American experiment. It, here's the issue. Unlike back then, we have a lot of people now, not all, but some people now who want to come to this country not to take part in that great experiment. We have some people who come now, not all, uh, not seeking freedom, not in a boat seeking freedom, hopping across a moat or overstaying a work visa to benefit from a welfare state, only to subsequently, by the I'm way, vote again. God. Benefit from a welfare we state. We want people happy. My dude is Canadian, and he's talking about a welfare state that that immigrants are benefiting from. What welfare state, one, like what welfare state do we have, okay? Like barely, these people are barely surviving on our robust welfare state. Fucking dumbass Canadian sitting here telling me about American welfare state. But secondly, it's not even true. They're not even allowed to take advantage of our supposedly robust welfare state. The only part of the supposed welfare state that uh, immigrants can take advantage of is, is, and I hate to use the actual word Steven Crowder was trying to use originally when he was talking about Islam, but inconsequential. <laughs> it's like 0.005% of the welfare state that they're able to take advantage of, which is the emergency rooms. And, that, and if you get into the nitty gritty, a lot of people will actually point that out. They'll be like, well, you know, they, they, can, they can use our emergency room funds and not pay. Yeah. The alternative, of course, is that uh, if you are an undocumented immigrant and you came here and you've been living here uh, peacefully and contributing to the American economy and paying taxes, um, you know, sales taxes, um, and, and, and paying into Social Security, uh, you, and not getting anything in return, of course, uh, and you get into a car accident, you should die. <laughs> like, that's the alternative. the values and freedoms that made this country so desirable in the first place. I think that's just wrong. Just as I think, by the way, it's wrong for people to steal the place of anyone who legally waited in the queue to take part in this great American experiment. Black, white, brown, yellow alike, it doesn't matter. Does that make me a white supremacist? Should Jack Dorsey ban me? See, to me, racism is I really wish that Christians would just go back to whipping themselves with their belts in the end of a long day rather than do it so publicly to act like little old me is being victimized once again. Honestly, like it was, it was tight when, uh, is it Protestants that do it or Christians? I don't know. I mean, I don't know who does it, but I'm talking about the guy who just like fucking, you know, whips himself for all of the, uh, all of the awful things that they've done throughout that day. Uh, maybe Catholics, who knows? Anyway, look, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's just so pathetic. Yeah, self-flagellation. God, make self-flagellation great again. I just—it's so pathetic. Whenever I watch one of these overpaid dipshits on the internet cry about actually unrelated things, or things that don't affect them at all, or things that will never be a threat to their livelihoods or anything like that, while people are dying as a consequence of some of the words that they say in some instances, like Ben Shapiro's. But they cry nonstop about like being banned or, or getting censored or whatever the fuck. Just, it's crazy. Like, why, why do you want to, why do you want to be a victim so bad? Why do you want to be a victim so desperately that like now big bad Jack Dorsey's coming after me? Little old me with 3.7 million subscribers, little old me with a fuckload of investors that'll dump money into my shit show. In socialism, and they're saying white supremacy now, they, they sort of are tossing all uh, racism under this umbrella, so we yeah. can even use that, but white supremacy is the word of the day right now. When people, you know, you get, you get a hashtag going like train seals, that's white supremacy. Racism, socialism, any form of economic classism, they're evil and corrosive to the human spirit for the same reason to me, in that they are worldviews that identify you by what you have rather than what you do. 
And by proxy, these ideologies rob you of who you are. You have black skin. You have white skin. You have a vagina. You have more money than me. Rather than looking at someone and saying, oh, you studied hard in school. You worked your way into a good college. Yeah. You created a business that now allows you to employ 5,000 people. You treat your family well. You stayed with your wife and kids. You are an honest person. You are a good man. And my challenge to you is this. I don't want to get high and mighty here, but when you see these trends circulating, it, yeah, it, it gets my antenna up. My challenge to you is this. If, if we're going to talk about banning people, okay, for actually inciting physical violence predicated on a hateful worldview, fine, I get it. No, it's not time for unity. It's time for an alliance, okay? And there's a difference. It's time for an alliance of people who, who, who value everything that has created the West, who hold Western values here, the, the values that allow me to use my iPhone and this internet to upload this video to a platform freely, which hopefully won't censor it as hate speech. Who knows now with the, the horrible Leviathan that Twitter and Google and Facebook have become in choosing to eradicate certain worldviews. But all, it's Western values that allows this even to happen. So I'm not about unity right now. How about an alliance? How about an alliance with other people who, who, who recognize and ally themselves against the evil that is political Islam? Because you know what, to unite I hate it when people talk about what others have and, and try to incite violence against them. I hate it. Also, my views are totally incompatible with white supremacists. Whenever I talk about Western values, it's totally different, guys. It's totally, totally different. And if I ran a social media platform, probably wouldn't want people converting violent Nazis on there either. Understood. But if we are going to start banning and censoring people just because you throw an umbrella term out there, it is very important for you to define exactly what it is with tremendous specificity. Now, I already have. I put my money where my mouth is. So Jack Dorsey, Mark Zuckerberg, Susan Wojcicki, and to all those who petition these people to ban users, you tell me what exactly is white supremacy? Who exactly is a white supremacist and who should be banned? I want specifics. Let me see your comments. Why is he so confused? like who who the white supremacists are it's people that that talk about how the white race is superior it's people that use substitutions for the race by talking about culture and civilization that's literally what it is that's people that incite violence it's people that incite violence against other groups of individuals on the basis of their identity or their ethnic backgrounds or the color of their skin or in some instances what they believe in like their religion it's the people that say stuff like western culture is supreme and we should ally everyone who wants to uphold western values against the blight that is political Islam. Seems like pretty, pretty clear cut. 